Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, I am going to talk about why I do not recommend changing the rings in your planner binder. I changed the rings in this binder about three years ago in 2017. And yes, I was doing planner videos back then. I've been doing planner videos for a while now. But in 2017, I changed the rings in this binder, and I'm going to show you how it destroyed my binder. Now, some of you may be wondering, how do I get larger rings for my planner binder? Because some of you may still decide to change out your rings after watching this video. Well, there are two ways you can get larger planner rings. Number one is that you can contact the Franklin Planner customer service at their phone number. So if you go to the franklinplanner.com website and you scroll all the way to the bottom, at the bottom there is a 1-800 number where you can contact their customer service department. And by the way, if there is anything that you're looking for, something that maybe used to be on the website that you don't see anymore, you can always call their customer service line and sometimes they have the items in stock but they're not listed on the website. And if you didn't know, you can use promo codes over the phone with the customer service agent. I have a discount promo code that you can use. The discount promo code is Tanya Plans. A few years ago, I contacted the Franklin Planner Customer Service Department and I requested these two inch rings and they sent them to me. I believe back then the rings were around $12 and it wasn't much to ship so it was very economical to do. I'm going to insert some footage from three years ago when I replaced the rings in my binder. I was so excited about it. I thought I had found a hack and it was a wonderful thing that I wanted to share with everyone. Hi everybody, this is Tanya and I'm so excited because today I'm going to talk about how I changed out the rings in my Franklin Covey planner. Now what you see here are the old rings um, that I had in my Franklin planner leather unstructured binder and I just wanted to show you when you get your new rings in the mail you'll get the new rings and you get like a packet like this. This packet contains the screws and it says, please use a two millimeter Allen wrench, which, oh, let me show you how an Allen wrench look, because some of us need to see an Allen wrench. Now, the second way that you can get larger rings for your planner binder is to remove the rings from another binder and place the rings in the binder that you desire. So if you have another binder that has larger rings, you could remove those rings and place it in another binder. Now, just to give you a quick overview, if you see here, there is a hexagon screw. And if you have that screw in your planner binder, you can use an Allen wrench you simply remove this screw here and then there's a screw here now I say simply but it really wasn't simple I remember having problems removing those screws so that's just something to keep in mind it sounds easy but for me I did run into some problems removing the screws so of course when you remove the screws this whole metal piece comes out of your planner binder and you're left just with the leather and nylon part of the binder and then you can simply put the new rings in and you screw them back in with the two screws there and you're back in business. So now I'm going to talk about the disadvantages of changing the rings in your planner binder. Number one, when I called customer service and requested new rings, the customer service representative told me, she said, look, if we send you these rings, it will negate any warranty you have with your binder. So you don't get to replace these rings and then call Franklin Planner and say, well, oh, you sold me a defective binder. It doesn't work right. No, now that you've tampered with it, you're stuck with your binder. So that's one disadvantage of changing the rings in your planner binder. Another disadvantage to changing your 
your planner binder to larger rings is that your pages may stick out past your binder so let me just show you what I mean by that this is the binder that I'm currently using and actually it has one and a half inch rings and I love this binder I love the quality of it I love how large the rings are I just love it but this is called the Ivy simulated leather binder and this is a limited edition binder so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some planner pages out of here and just show you how it looks with two inch rings if you've changed the rings in your planner binder and you've had good results with it please put it in the comments because people watch these videos and they want to know about your experiences so please put that in the comments if you had a different experience than I have I am simply stating my opinion and some people have had really good results with changing the rings in their planner binder now watch this when I go to close the binder look look can you see that this is a flexible binder so I can kind of bend it back see my tabs they went past the zip this happens to be a zip up binder it went past this so what I found was my planner pages were sticking out too far and affecting my zipper and the zipper function so when I closed it and again I'm gonna put these planner pages kinda in the middle now see that see how now now my tabs are gonna be bent because they're sticking out too far I feel two inch rings is way too big I, I really do so I'm, I'm, I'm going to close this now if you see one of the things that why I say it destroyed my binder because my planner page is stuck out so far look what it did to my zipper this is a nylon zipper and now the material sticks out like this so it's because my planner pages were pushing out on the zipper this binder was not made for two inch rings it was made for the 1.25 inch rings that it came with so that's one way where I feel like it messed up the binder and I kind of don't want to use it because it that just don't look good that the way the zipper sticks out like that I don't I don't like that another disadvantage to using larger planner rings in your binder is that it could be hard to close and can leave imprints in your binder so when my binder was full it was a little hard to close okay it was hard to close because all of those pages sticking out so I was constantly trying to move this material around so the zipper would work because it was always hitting against planner tabs and planner pages now I want to show you how it destroyed my binder cover now if you look here I'm going to try to insert some footage of when this planner was new. Now compared to how it looked new, now I knew this planner because of the type of leather I have, I knew it would patina over time. I like the worn leather look. I knew it would scratch. I like this. This is what I signed up for. This is what I like. But with this type of material, I don't know if you can see here. See these planner, you, the planner rings began to leave an imprint you can you can see like there's an imprint there's an imprint there's an imprint because they were hitting against this so it sticks up maybe you can see it better like this where the planner rings are it left these indents now I'm telling you this because if you spent a lot of money on your planner binder you don't want to see indents like this on your planner and again it's because I put larger rings in this planner binder and it wasn't made for that so let's take this a little further so when you look at your planner binder okay so when you look at this area your binder will have this stem area now if you take a ruler and you measure this area now this again this binder was made for 1.25 inch rings if I measure from here to here this is three inches okay when your binder is made for larger rings this area will be wider okay so let me show you an example of that now in this planner love binder this has 1.25 inch rings this is the same size that this should have been when I first bought it 
and let me just measure this area notice how the stem area is the same size it's three inches here and it's three inches here because this binder was made for 1.25 inch rings but now let's look at my binder my ivy simulated binder which was made for one and a half inch rings just try to show you here now again this binder comes with one and a half inch rings by the way I feel one and a half inch rings are the sweet spot it is the perfect size for me so when I measure across here do you see this is really 3.25 inches across see notice how this is larger this binder is made for larger rings when it's made for larger rings this area here will be wider now, if you still choose to change the rings in your binder, I recommend not going up no more than 0.25 inches. So for example, if this binder was 1.25 inches to begin with, add 0.25 inches to that, and the highest I should have went up to probably was one and a half inches. I would only go up just a little. So hopefully that won't destroy your binder, but there's no guarantee. I hope you found this video helpful and will give you something to think about if you were thinking about changing the rings in your planner binder. I just feel like I totally destroyed this beautiful binder that I paid a lot of money for and I just don't want it to happen to you. Did you find this video helpful? If so, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button. This is Tanya, helping you feel more organized so this can be your best year yet. Take care.